Hello. Yeah. Very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to this uh, post lunch session. But looking at the topics and the speakers, I am sure all of you will be kept interested and you will get a lot of knowledge and understanding of spine and uh, shoulder pain and details about it. To start with, I would like to invite Dr. G.K. Kumar for his talk on neck pain. Brief about Dr. G.K. Kumar, he is a pain specialist, fellow of interventional pain uh, practice, WIP USA. He is a president of Tamil Nadu State of Branch, Indian Society for the Study of Pain, and associate professor in anesthesiology. Dr. Kumar. So, very good afternoon. So actually, I'm feeling very glad and elated uh, being one of the speaker in the, the prestigious conference. And uh, the, we have to congratulate the organizers for this uh, tremendous effort to make it as a great academic feast. So my topic is the clinical evaluation of the neck pain, including the differential diagnosis. As a, how common is the neck pain? Actually, neck pain affects any point of the, the prevalence is 10% in the given population at any point of time. Almost uh, the incidence comes around 30 to 50% of the general population annually. And 15% of them are chronically affected. That means uh, they have been suffering with the pain for more than three months at any part of their life. And it's affected mm -hmm. almost 15% of the working population will annually experience the limited activity due to this illness. That's why it's a little bit significant. But unfortunately, the uh, studies and the literatures are very much limited when compared to the lumbar spine. The lumbar pain, you have a lot of literature, a lot of references there, which is relatively less. So in another 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to, my key point in this lectures will be the what is the neck pain actually, what are the causes, and how do we evaluate clinical, the neck pain, and how to make the possible clinical diagnosis. So, what is the neck pain? I couldn't find out any classical definition for the thing, only the description is there. The ISP described the cervical pain as perceived anywhere in the posterior region of the cervical pain, from the posterior nuchal line, to the first thoracic spinous process area. The bone and joint together to the talk force also describe the same thing, but it describes a little bit anatomically the posterior the superior nuchal line to the spine of the scapula, slide down to the superior border of the clavicle. So it has given the area only they defined. It is not giving any classical description uh, definition. <laughs> so before that, we have to know certain terminology, then only we can understand what is the patient is saying, what is the clinical symptoms of that. So what is meant by the axial pain? It's a dull aching pain. So nociceptive pain caused by the structure within the neck and perceived in the neck itself. This is the most important thing. Radicular pain, the lancinating electric shock-like pain runs deeply into the shoulder, arm, and up to the fingers, caused by the compression of the, or inflammation of the nerve, or DRG. So radiculopathy is nothing but associated with the weakness, affection of the nerves with the sensation, or numbness, tinkling. That means the weakness or loss of sensation will be there. So caused by the ischemia of the nerve roots. And referred pain, this is very important because most of the times we get confused uh, what is the real pain arising from the neck itself or it is perceived from the, some other organ. Or the neck pain, neck pathology will produce the pain in somewhere else other than the neck area. So dull, aching, deep, poorly localized pain caused by structures within the neck and perceived in the different location like head, shoulder, scapula or the arm. We totally misguide or miss the diagnosis of the neck pathology. Other other regions of the pain may refer to the neck regions. So, atlanta occipital, atlanta all the things will go to the little bit occipital area. 
and disc radius in extends to the occipital. So some pain may be referred to the neck area, some neck pain may be referred to the some other area because of the same innervations. So what are the clinical features as per? Neck pain develops gradually or which follows the trauma. Recurrent episodes are very common in neck pain rather than the comparatively the lumbar spine pain. The clinical features associated with neck pain are stiffnesses, headache, dizziness, radiating the shoulders, the arm, all the things that, are, that have the tremendous or a clear cut clue as the finding out the pathology. The neck pain, the post traumatic onset with the associated with the wide range of the symptoms, including the temporal mandibulas, visual or auditory disturbances, sleep problems, cognitive and emotional problems. And these neck pains are always associated sometimes with the decreased cervical movements, especially with the patients with the muscular pathology or joint pathology, increased fatigability when the arthritis is the cause, decreased pressure pain threshold on the cervical medicine when it's become a little bit chronic, and comorbids such as anxiety, depression, and low back pain may indicate the severe conditions. So what are the causes of the neck pain? The abnormalities in the bone or joint, obviously. Trauma is a 30 to 50 percent of the causes it caused by the trauma, poor posture due to the uh, occupational hazards, degenerative disease process, tumors and muscle strain contributes around 15 to 50 percent of the neck pain. What are the risk factors patient to develop the risk pain, uh, neck pain? Repetitive work, that is repetitive stress injury, RSI, prolonged periods of cervical spine inflection, especially the clerical work, High psychological job strains. Smoking has the tremendous relationship between the high correlative positive relationship between the development of the neck due to the oxidative metabolic different, um, problems. Previous neck or shoulder surgery is also prone to develop the neck pain later that. What will be the causes of the neck pain? That is the etiology. Most of the etiologies are different and the structure wise. When you take the cervical spine, the facet joint are 15 to 50 per 30% causes the internal disc disruption. You know that this commonly affect with the middle age or working age group. And it's severe disease will cause prolonged disc, interversal disc. And that may cause a cervical radicular pain or cervical radiculopathy. Under spinous ligaments may be there when the case is the strain or the trauma. Myofascial syndrome contributes as elsewhere, contributes a little bit to 15 to 20 percent of the cases. The most common one is the trapezius myofascial syndromes. Spondylar arthropathies, all the things you know that, referred pain from the shoulder, heart, lung, and diaphragm are also things we shouldn't forget it. Others are post herpetic neuralgia, diapetic is a very common in Indian scenario. And nerve entrapment syndromes, occipital neuralgia, carpal tunnel syndromes, brachial plexus neuropathy, CRPS, all the things are. Uh, coming as a cause when you're coming to the neck pain. How do you find out the causes or how do you start clinical evaluation of the neck pain? History, very important that and we have to go for clinical examination. Then the group of differential diagnosis may come into in our mind that that can be with the diagnostic algorithms, clinical possible clinical diagnosis can be arrived. With the investigations and diagnostic interventions, the final diagnosis or confirm the diagnosis can be attained. So history, what is the thing? You have to cite duration, onset, character, radiation, aggravating, relieving, all the things are very important. Cite how it started, duration, it is gradual or the rapidly started, I mean, if it is trauma, it is rapidly started, degenerative disease or slow process, all the things are very important. Occupational history gives us the planning for the long-term pain relief when it is have the rehabilitation programs. When the patient is having continuously flexion, definitely patient like to have the muscle injury will be there. Associated symptoms, some of the, also we have to find it whether the diabetes, all the things are used. But trauma and surgery has the greatest risk for the sole factor for the becoming a neck pain. Family history, of course. Some arthritis or runs in family, all the things are, we have to do that on fibromyalgia syndrome also present as a neck pain. So what are the clinical examination? As usual, any clinical examination goes through this inspection, palpations, sensory motor examination. That inspection, we have to know 
forget, don't forget about look for the skin changes, especially it may give simple clues for post herpetic scars and may be there. And sometimes psoriatic arthritis findings may be there. And the posture of the neck is very important and spasm, all the things we can know that. And shoulder symmetry, all the things are very important to diagnosis. I'm not going into the every each and every detail because the time is only 15 minutes allotted for me. Palp palpation part, you have to palpate the bony parts, all the transverse process, facetal joint uh, areas, all the things you have to look for, the pain or uh, things. Thing. And tender spots also you can note along the muscular uh, areas. And the spasms, the patient is having some muscle injury, definitely you can feel the spasm, spasm also that, which group of muscle is particularly in some spasm. And range of movements, flexion, extension, lateral flexion, all the four range you have to do that, it gives a lot of clue because the lateral flexion is going to be affected in the degenerative arthritis. Rotation is the earliest going to be affected in the patient with rheumatoid arthritis because of the odontide type plug. So these kind of the clues help us to when you examine systematically. And sensory examination, each and every part of the nerve roots has to be examined, okay? It has the, as you know, that um, sensory dermatomes are, the, uh, tomes are there. And motor examination, grading is very important. Zero to five, zero is uh, totally air flex, and uh, five is the normal muscle power. When there is a, a motor neuropathy is there, we can know that the patient is, is one of the signs for red flag syndromes. Progressive sensory weakness, uh, sensory loss, and progressive muscular loss is uh, one of the signs of red flag. And reflexes, you have to grade the reflexes, zero to three. Zero is a, a reflexia, one is the hyperreflexia, two is the normal, three is the hyperreflexia. Hyperreflexia is the upper motor neuron disease. When the motor defect is there, you can see the zero to one. Usually, biceps denotes the C5 nerve root, uh, brachioradial is, uh, denotes the C6, and triceps denotes C7. So it gives us an easy clue to find out the, which nerve root is affected because the patient may have the multiple discs in the MRI, but which is producing the pain, we can only find out by examining the patients clinically. And special tests, I'll come to the later. These are all the special tests which will help us to substantiate or exclude. Lot of things are there. The most important, the spurling test on the shoulder abduction test. Spurling test is nothing but the provocative test. The positive indicates the cervical foramenal stenosis or the root compression that. The shoulder abduction test relieves the uh, compression, all the things. The, the positive means the pain relieved by shoulder abductions. So all the things you can go a little bit detailedly when, but how to do that and what is the specificity and sensitivity of the test. These two tests are neck distraction tests or three, upper three tests are very useful to substantiate uh, cervical radiculopathies. So after that, we have to go through the neck pain algorithms. So that, that, that means how to differentiate the neck pain and how to find out the possibly reasonably clinical diagnosis. So neck pain, any neck pain, you have to rule out the red flags. Fit, fit is the fracture and infection tumor. This is not our domain. Patient has to be referred or a patient has to be handled in different way. So apart from that, we have to clinically differentiate neck pain only. And neck pain with the arm pain, that means the radicular pain is there. The neck pain with the headache, the three categories are there. So neck pain only algorithm, neck pain only, the axial neck pain, you know the what is axial. If it is a midline tenderness in the spine, it, with the spine, it is increased with the flexion. That means internal disc disruption. Dr. Kumar, you have only two minutes Yeah, left. sure, I'll finish it up. If there's an increase with the neck extension, that means bilateral facet. Midline tenderness, interspinous pain, tenderness is there, interspinous ligament is there. Paramedian means, again, facetal joints, unilateral. Localized tender points over the muscle, very simple myofascial syndromes are there. Neck pain with the arm pain, we have the two categories, patchy, dermatomal, non-dermatomal. Global means CRPS, fibromyalgia syndromes, hypothyroidism, all the things will be there. And what is the dermatomal pain? We have the three in diagnosis there. Uh, disc with radiculopathies, disc prolapse, post-herpetic neuralgia, diabetic mononeuropathy is there. What are the clinical symptoms? Disc with cervical radiculopathy, you know that tingling, numbness, sensory, motor, spurling is positive, valsalva will be positive. 
post herpetic neuron, the important sign is the herpetic scar will be there, allodynia, hyperalgia is there, diapetic, history of the diapetic, hyperesthesia will be there. With the arm pain, with the non-dermatomal pattern, nerve entrapment syndromes or referred pain, fibromyalgia, facet joints, all the things will be there. And you know that how to diagnose the facet joint, other things. Headache, we have the four categories there. I'll take one minute. Occipital neuralgia, facet joint, arthropathy, myofascial syndrome, migraine. The three things is very important for us. Sharp shooting, localizing pain, tenderness along the greater occipital nerve, long occipital T1, it will be the occipital neuralgia. Facet is mostly localized and extension pain will be there. Myofascial syndromes, restricted movement, dull, aching, tender point injection, trigger point, uh, tender point uh, pain will be there, TP will be there. Migraine, you know that it is entirely different, one with the predominant headache, fixed duration associated with other RR, visual or vomiting will be there. So sign and symptoms of the cervical radiculopathy, it is there, it's, uh, we can get it anywhere else. So some of the things will keep in mind, Shall I take one more minute? If possible. Yeah, okay, fine. So these are all things you have to keep in mind. Neuropathic pain is nearly always characterized by the radiations because C7, C6 is the most commonly affected one. Pain in the atlanto occipital or the upper joints disc extends into the occiput. So non-neuropathic pains tend to occur. It may be the non-dermatomal. The presence of the confirmed neurological signs with the negative MRI findings denotes means the some other nerve entrapments, especially the brachial plexus or carpal or cubital tunnel syndromes. So aggravating relieving factors will help us to work up the disease or uh, finding out the thesis. So these are in nutshell with the things we can find out. The, the most important one, the, the thorough clinical examiners will bring out the pinpoint our clinical diagnosis that can be substantiated with the uh, investigation and diagnostic interventions. Thanks a lot for uh, extending uh, 30 seconds under one, one minute. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. You have come